Today I'm going to talk about how to solve division problems using repeated subtraction. I'll start with a very basic problem, 32 divided by 8. Now just like multiplication is repeated addition, we have learned that division is repeated subtraction. So that means I can subtract the same thing over and over and over again to divide and get an answer. So if I'm dividing 38 divided by 2, I'm just going to repeatedly subtract 8. 32 minus 8 is 24. Subtract 8 again. That's 16. Subtract 8 again. That's 8. And then subtract 8 one more time and I get 0. Now, to find my answer, I just have to figure out how many 8's I took away from 32 until there was nothing left. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 8's that I took away. Notice that I circled where those subtraction symbols were. I took away 4 8's to equal 0, so 32 divided by 8 equals 4. Now. If we have this basic concept and we know that division is simply repeated subtraction, then we can use that to solve larger division problems. So let's start with a larger division problem. Let's say 93 divided by 4. Now I'm going to make my division symbol go all the way over and we'll come back to why I've done that later. But I'm writing 93 divided by 4. If I wanted, I could do minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. I could repeatedly subtract 4 until I got either down to 0 or to a small enough number where I can't take 4 away. But I can also use my basic multiplication facts or my friendly multiples of 4 to help me take more than one 4 away at a time. For instance, I know that four groups of 10 groups of 4 is 40. So I could take away 10 groups of 4 automatically. So I'm going to take away 10 4s. 10 times 4 is 40. So I'm taking away 10 4s all at once. 93 minus 40 is 53. Okay. That works so well, I see that 53 is larger than 40. I can take 10 more groups of 4 away. I can take 40 away again. 53 minus 40 is 13. And now I'm down to a basic multiplication fact for four, my 4s. And I know that something close to 13 without going over is 3 groups of 4, because 3 groups of 4 is 12. So I'm going to take away 12. And I get 1 left over there. If I ask myself, can I take away any more groups of 4? No. 1's going to be a leftover, which we have learned is a remainder. Now, to check that I make to check to make sure that I have my work done correctly, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recompose all the numbers that I took away. So I took away 40 plus 40 plus 12. I took away those numbers, and I had one left. So I need to add that in. I need to add the leftovers in. And when I add 40 plus 40 plus 12 plus 1, my answer should be 93. 93 decomposed is 40 plus 40 plus 12. Now that helps me with my division answer because all I need to do is on the top, that's where the quotient goes, is I need to ask myself how many groups of 4 was 40? Well, it was 10 groups of 4. Okay, this 40 was 10 groups of 4. This 12 was 3 groups of 4. Hmm, that one doesn't have any groups of four, but I do need to remember that is my remainder. Maybe I'll put an R beside it to remember that is my remainder. Okay, so if I com compose these numbers together, 10 plus 10 plus 3 is 23, and then I have that one left over, so the answer will be 23 remainder 1. 
You can do this strategy with an even larger division problem. I'll do one last division problem before I let you try on your own. What if we had 778 divided by 6? And now you know why I've done the division symbol all the way off the side. Um, 778 divided by 6 is a pretty big number. I certainly don't want to subtract 6 repeatedly, minus 6, minus 6, minus 6. That would take a long time. Um, I could say mm, 10 groups of 6 is 60, but that doesn't take away very much. A friendlier multiple, other than multiplying by 10, I could take away, I could take away 100 groups of 6 very quickly which is 600. So 778 minus 600 is 178. Okay, That took a big chunk away, and I've already taken 100 groups of 6. Now here, I could take away 10 groups of 6, which is 60, but I feel like I'd still have a pretty large number. Let's see if I can take away 20 groups of 6. What's 20 times 6? Well, 2 times 6 is 12, so 20 times 6 is 120. Yes, that will work. I can take that away. And 78 minus 20, 178 minus 120 is 58. Now I'm getting away from my friendly multiples of 6 by 10s, 20s, 100s, 1000s. Um, 10 times 6 is 60, and I can't take 60 away anymore. So I think I'm down to my basic multiplication facts for 6. And since 10 times 6 is 60, this is very close to 60. I'm just going to back down 1, and I'm going to take away 9 groups of 6. I know that 9 times 6 is 54, so I can take away 58 minus 54, and that gets 4. When I see that I have 4 left... I know that I cannot take away any more groups of 6. If I have 4, that will not make a group of 6. So this is going to end up being my remainder. I'll put an R beside that so I remember that's remainder. Now I need to recompose all the numbers that I subtracted away. I subtracted 600, so I'm going to add that back in. I subtracted 120, so I'm going to add that back in. I subtracted 54, so I'm going to add that back in. And then I had four leftovers, so I have to add the four re remainder left in. Okay. And then to find my quotient, I know that 600 was 100 groups of 6. 120 was 20 groups of 6. 54 was 9 groups of 6. And 4 doesn't have any groups of 6, and I like to put that 0 up there because a common mistake will be for a kid to put plus 4 up there. Um, so I want to make sure that I, don't, I know that 4 has 0 groups of 6. Now if I compose all these together, 100 plus 20 plus 9 is 129, and I have to remember that I had rem 4 remaining. So my final answer is 129, remainder 4.